Welcome back. All right, so, so some more news of the day for all you fine people on the internet. As we get closer and closer to the draft and we're into the official offseason now, and there's a lot going on. Really until about the middle of July, we do see a lot of movement, a lot of things go on, and then it just sort of quiets down uh, until late August usually. But we'll see if this summer follows that same trajectory, considering how late the Stanley Cup final went. Anyways, we'll start at the top of the board with the Boston Bruins. Does that work? Good. Uh, despite speculation that maybe Corpus Allo might get swapped out, or maybe they'd look at a buyout, uh, reporting is that they're not going to do either of those things. Uh, Corpus Allo will be the backup goaltender for the Boston Bruins. Um, I have had discussions with people about how, you know, Bussy looks like he's ready to come up and be the backup. But if you look at teams around the NHL, how many of them this past season have carried three goaltenders, and how many of them ended up needing to use all three and you end up with an injury situation. Having depth in in goal in your in your organization is really really important. So I don't mind them going out and getting Corpus Allo. I know there was a lot of discussion, but I mean he's just going to be a backup. He's going to play probably about thirty games. I think Corpus Allo can play well for thirty games. Part of the reason I think he's had his struggles in recent seasons. I think he's been overplayed at times. So we'll see how things go for him in Boston. Rule changes, and there's nothing major with the rule changes that were unanimously approved by the Board of Governors today. Uh, these will be smoothed out over the next couple of weeks and then made official. But they've approved the expansion of the coaches' challenge to include puck over glass penalties. Now, this does not mean that if there's no call that a coach can challenge and say that was clearly puck over glass. Nope. It is only in situations where the puck clears the glass, according to the official, and the team believes the official got the call wrong. So this will simply be used to take penalties off the board. It cannot be used to put a penalty on the board. So I, I don't think it's going to be anything major. I don't think we'll see a ton of them because puck over glass, we see what? Maybe one call per game. Um, sometimes we'll see a couple, but I don't think this is going to have a major effect. And we'd rather see them get the call right. So... Uh, yeah, teams have the right to challenge, and it becomes, a, of course, a power play if they're wrong. So, yeah, we'll see how things go. Um, knocking the net off. So, knocking the net off of your defensive player, that means that the offensive team gets to decide which face-off circle to use, and your team doesn't get a change. That has been altered now. It's not just defending players. It also includes goaltenders. So, now if a goalie knocks the net off, and unless he is pushed into the net by the offending team... Uh, or I guess offensive team, uh, then it's it's a situation where a team can't make a, a change, and uh, the the attacking team gets to decide which faceoff circle to use. So again, it's not a major change there. Um, unsportsmanlike conduct is going to be handed out to basically players who have their leg hanging over the boards during the play. They're going to get a warning first. I'm guessing from the linesman, be yelling at him, "Hey, knock it off." Um, this is going to have an effect. This is going to have an effect on the speed of line changes. Um, I don't think it's it's going to be awful. I think it's going to be fine. Uh, players will adjust, but we're probably going to see some penalties handed out both in the preseason and early in the season while players are figuring out where that line is and how quickly and how easily they're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts on those rule changes um, and, and whether or not you think they're they're going to make any kind of a difference to the viewing experience. I don't think they will. Again, I'd rather see them get the puck over glass call correct, so that's fine. Um, so Dreisaitl, who apparently was playing through a, a broken rib or broken ribs in the playoffs, uh, he's saying it's going to take some time for him to figure out what he wants as well as what the Oilers are willing to offer in contract extension talks. So those negotiations are still in their infancy stage, and so we'll see whether or not Dreisaitl ups with uh, with the Oilers beyond this upcoming season. I don't see any reason why he won't. They were just in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final. Usually players want to stick around and finish what they started that way. So I would say that they'll probably figure it out relatively early in the offseason. Or at the very least, I would think before next season starts, they'll have some kind of an extension in place with Leon Dreisaitl. You don't want to leave that hanging out there. Uh, Gary Bettman. Uh, has confirmed that Alex Morello is out. He's gone. That's it. He has told the NHL, "Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to be going through with trying to get a new building." 
And he was asked about, okay, so that, that history of the team that he has, could that go back to Winnipeg? My answer to that is, I, I don't know why it didn't go to Utah. Um, I, I don't understand. It's the first time I can think of where an owner gets to just have a team's history. Like, the owner has it. Why? It should it should go with the franchise since the franchise moved to another city. I honestly, I think it should be in Utah. I think talk, treating Utah like an expansion team is weird. Since all the players, the coaches, everybody goes to Utah, that's relocation, not expansion. But um, Gary Bettman saying the idea of returning the Jets' history to Winnipeg is an excellent question. Meaning, I'm not answering that, but he didn't shoot it down. So for Jets fans who have wanted that history back, maybe the NHL at this point is ready to hand it back. Um, which would be weird because that's just going to change up all the history. And I've always said that I, I think that the history should stay with the franchise, so when the franchise moves, the history stays with them. I don't think it's a huge deal, but I know there are some in Winnipeg that would like to have that history back. So the window's open for them to maybe get it back, even though that would be weird because they still have, like, Atlanta numbers in Winnipeg. So then, like, when Atlanta gets a new team, maybe they get back. I, it, it's a whole mess. It's a whole mess. I'll put it this way. I don't think the Colorado Avalanche would be concerned with having the Colorado Rockies history from their brief period of time there, but, again... Um, I understand the sentiment from, from Jets fans. We'll see if that does, in fact, happen. Uh, Steve Steos saying that they're not looking at buying anybody out, and he denies that Shabbat's on the block. And he's saying that, yeah, a lot of players end up having their name brought up. It's part of the game, uh, but that's they, they have no intention. A uh, very similar thing said by Brad Tree living about Mitch Marner, that there's all kinds of noise, but he's let Marner know how much he likes the player, and it's not a big deal. This time of year, we get a lot of trade speculation. And, of course, with all the re-signings and not re-signings that are going to go to market, this is where rumors are at a at an all-time high for the year. So, yeah, um, the Sens, it looks like, have, have made their move in picking up Allmark, who has publicly said he is excited to become the starting goaltender for the Ottawa Senators. And so... Yeah, we'll see what else they have to do in the offseason, but apparently buyouts are not going to be one of those things. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes are being watched a lot right now. There's a lot of names out there. So Teravine, it looks like, probably going to market. Uh, Natchez, has want, he wants out. They want to trade him. Uh, Eric Tulski sitting down for an interview with Pierre Lebrun and telling him that the, the trade talks continue. Lebrun speculating that the... The player could be moved before or during the draft because there's rumors they want a first-round pick and then something. And so if they want a first-round pick this year, that pick would have to be moved, you would think, before the draft has taken place, um, unless they go with a 2025, but that's unlikely. But they want an, a pretty extensive package for them. Uh, one thing that he did say is they're likely to match any offer sheet for Natchez. So a team might have to spend a lot of money to actually pry Natchez out of Carolina. Uh, because basically if it's a ridiculous offer, Tulski says, yep, no, nope, we'll, we'll let him go for a ridiculous offer, but it's going to it's gonna take a lot of money. So if an offer sheet comes in, we're very likely to see Carolina match it. He also says that they're not far apart in their negotiations with Jake Gensel. Doesn't mean they're signing him, of course, uh, and it, it doesn't mean that they're that close either, uh, just that you know, in terms of maybe it's money that they're not quite close on, maybe it's term they're not quite close on, but it, it does sound like they're doing everything they can to hold on to Jake Gensel, who will be ridiculously popular on July the 1st, should we get there without him having an extension with Carolina. Uh, one signing to talk about today, and the reason for Canucks jersey, Teddy Bluger staying in Vancouver. I'm very happy about that. He signs a two-year extension. The cap hit he had this season was $1.9 million. His cap hit drops to $1.8 million. So between Suter and Bluger, they're paying less than $4 million in cap space to two centers on their team. So uh, that's some, some pretty smart moves made by Vancouver in the Suter signing. And now with Bluger, his extension sticking around. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy with what the Canucks management has done. It looks like Myers may very well end up going to market. But the Canucks are, are going to be, I would think, relatively aggressive on July the 1st, too. It should be a fun day. So don't forget, the live streams are are there. Uh, don't forget to, to hit on that notify uh, for the live streams that are upcoming, because we have one for the first round of the draft on Friday, one for the 2nd through 7th. 
though I'm not going to be watching all the way through the seventh round uh, on Saturday morning. And then, of course, there's there's a meetup on Saturday afternoon. So, and that's at Hickey Park if you wanted to come out and play street hockey. And then on Monday, it's free agent day. So, hopefully, any aches and pains I'm going through after playing street hockey on Saturday are completely cured by Monday because uh, the the live stream for free agent day tends to be kind of crazy. And I'm going to be on my feet the whole time. So hopefully I'm perfectly fine after a street hockey game on Saturday. I was fine after the one in Chilliwack last Saturday. So hopefully that bodes well. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. If you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. Or just because you feel like it. Maybe you haven't done it yet. Maybe you're like, something's missing from my day. Try like and subscribe. Let me know if it fixed your day, if you're having a rough one. And hey, thanks again for all your support. It does mean a lot. Uh, it's been a great season. Now we're getting into next season, and I can't wait to see that either. Uh, but yeah, thanks for your support. I'll talk to you guys again soon.